doing this is another episode of notable prisons and inmates that occupies them or has occupied them the most notable ones not everyone that's in this too many people anyways appreciate y'all for watching drop a comment let me know something in the feedback give me some recommendations and uh, you know we're gonna knock it out so this one's a special one because there was a rapper locked up at this one and we are going to take a trip to big sandy it's a high security federal prison for male inmates in kentucky near inez it's operated by the feds and the facility also has a satellite prison camp which houses minimum security people right it's located in eastern kentucky approximately 133 miles from lexington and 140 miles from frankfort and 320 from Washington, D.C. USP Big Sandy is located both on a mountaintop removal mining site and a former underground coal mine. Due to the underground mine, the federal government spent $40 million to remediate the site before construction and had to spend additional millions after construction began to fix further issues, making the project the most expensive federal prison project at the time. Harvard University owned the oil and gas rights to the property and was leasing the property to Columbia Gas and the state of, and the state of prison construction. The prison is known for housing multiple high-profile inmates. The facility houses a large number of people who were convicted of crimes in Washington, D.C. and uh, due to national capital to revitalization and self-government improvement act of 97 which gave the feds prisons custody of DC felon. And as of 2013, up to about 33% have been convicted of DC crimes. Additional, many federal inmates are sent there because they have been convicted of violent crimes and are now serving long sentences. So this is a very, very short list, but let's get to this. First up, we have Charles MacArthur, Emmanuel, Chucky, Taylor. Why does this dude got a long ass name? But he was the son of former libertarian dictator Charles Taylor, convicted in 08 of crimes related to the torture of his father's political and military opponents in Liberia. Between 99 and 03, the uh, first prosecution of a U.S. citizen for committing acts of torture outside of the U.S. He is serving a 97 year sentence. He's scheduled for release in 2090. Yeah. Get your lighters ready, people. Someone might get smoked in this episode. Vincent Basciano. He's a former boss of the Bonanno crime family. In 04, after boss Joseph Massino was arrested and convicted of in 06 of murder, conspiracy, and racketeering, he was convicted in 2011 of ordering the 2004 murder of the Badano associate Randolph Pizzolo and he is serving two life sentences but he was transferred to USP Atlanta ATL ho next we have Auburn Call Callaway he was a hijacker of the Federal Express flight 705 in 1994 and he's serving a life sentence with no possibility of parole so let me tell you a little bit more about this federal express high uh, express flight 705 so pretty much right on april 7th 1994 the federal express flight 705 at mcdonald douglas uh, airport it was a cargo jet carrying electronics equipment across the united states from memphis to california it was involved in a hijack attempt by Auburn R. Callaway, who the prosecution argued was trying to commit suicide. Callaway, a Federal Express employee, was facing possible dismissal for lying about his flight hours. He boarded the scheduled flight as a deadhead passenger carrying a guitar case, concealing several hammers and a spear gun. He tried to switch off the aircraft's cockpit voice recorder before takeoff, and once airborne, kill the crew with hammers so their injuries would appear consistent with an accident rather than a hijacking. The CVR, though, was switched back on by the flight engineer, believing that he had neglected to turn it on. 
And so Callaway intended to use the spear gun as a last resort. He planned to crash the aircraft, hoping that he would appear to be an employee killed in an accident. He sought to let his family collect on a $2.5 million life insurance policy provided by the Federal Express. Callaway's efforts to kill crew were unsuccessful. Despite severe injuries, the crew fought back and uh, subdued Callaway and landed the aircraft. During his trial, Callaway attempted to invoke an insanity defense, but he was found guilty of multiple charges, including murder, including attempted murder, attempted air piracy, and interference with uh, flight crew operations. He received two consecutive life sentences with no chance of parole. Callaway successfully appealed the conviction for interference, which was ruled to be a lesser offense of attempted air piracy. I actually seen a YouTube video about this dude. And basically, I remember the guitar thing. And so he was just sitting there, and he just grabbed that hammer out. He just started whacking off, whacking people. To boom, boom, boom. But they overpowered him, and they, shit, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, they overpowered him. But uh, anyways, next person. We have Chevy Kehoe. He's a white supremacist convicted of on charges of racketeering, racketeering in the aid of a murder and robbery conspire, conspiracy in connection to the kidnapping, torture, and murders of William and Nancy Mueller and their eight-year-old daughter, Sarah Powell. Co-defendant Daniel Lee Lewis was executed for the murders at United States Penitentiary Terre Haute, uh, July 14th, 2022. And he was transferred to Big Sandy from USP McCary in April 2021. Next, we have El Saeed Nasir, an Egyptian-born American citizen convicted in involvement in the 1993 New York City landmark bomb plot. He had earlier been tried for but acquitted of the 1990 New York City assassination of Amir Khan, a Jewish religious figure and far-right Israeli politician. He later admitted to having committed this assassination as well. And finally, but last but not least, we got... Kodak Black. He was serving a 46-month sentence for falsifying information on the background form to purchase a firearm. But as you all may know, Trump commuted his sentence. And right before Trump left office, he was able to get Kodak Black out of federal prison. January 20th, 2021. Now, I will say this, if that man was in fact racist, he definitely probably wouldn't have, uh, you know, released Kodak Black, unless there's a bigger picture that I'm not aware of, but I could be wrong. Let me know some in the comments what y'all think, and I appreciate y'all for watching. Drop comments below, and uh, stay tuned for another episode.